Hey crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week we're gonna be doing a little bit of sewing. So I've had so much fun sewing for my granddaughter lately and she loves these little toys and little blankets that have a crinkle to them. So I thought it would be really fun to learn how to make a sensory blanket or a crinkle blanket. And there is a really cool secret supply that makes the crinkle happen. So I can't wait to show you. So make sure you stay tuned. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure you click on the subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. I try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. And hey, if you're one of my faithful followers, Thanks so much for coming back. Exciting news, we hit 13,000 subscribers this month. So I just love all the support you guys are giving me and I hope I'm inspiring you guys to make things. So give me a second, I'm gonna get my camera angle changed and we are gonna do some sewing this week. So let's get started with this project. Now I have this stash of fleece in my treasure of fabric that I have and Riley has got some foxes in her nursery so I thought it would be so cute. I am going to do this a 12 by 12 little sensory blanket. The one that I posted on my blog post I actually did a little bit larger of a blanket but I decided to use up this scrap material. So I am using fleece. You could definitely use some cotton material also. So I'm going to be using the fleece. I'm going to be using my quilting ruler. I'm going to be using a pair of scissors. And then I also am going to add some ribbon ties to the sides of it. So I've just grabbed some ribbon out of my stash. And then I've got a wooden ring and I am going to use my snaps, my cam snaps, to add on that wooden ring to the blanket. And then, of course, you're going to need some thread and your sewing machine. And we can't forget the secret ingredient to this project. And believe it or not, it's an oven bag. And the oven bag is going to give us crinkle in the blanket. Works great and it sews together just great. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do here is I've got that excess salvage on the side and I want to go ahead and I want to trim that off and I just want to make sure that I can get 12 inches by 12 inches out of this. Like I said before, you could also put cotton on one side. Um, you could do a terry cloth on one side. You could mix your textures. In this case, I just love this fabric so much and I know that Miss Riley loves the feel of fleece, so I decided to use it for this project. So all I'm going to do is make sure my fabric's nice and even put together, and I am going to make sure that this is measuring 12 by 12. This does not have to be exact. I am just using my ruler as a guide, and I'm going to trim that right up. So there we have it. We've got our fabric all cut out, and we are ready to go. So one thing I still need to do here is I still need to cut that oven bag. So what I want to do is I'm going to use this piece to use as a pattern for cutting out my oven bag. Now oven bags are um, two layer and I just like to leave it intact and use both layers on my um, sensory blanket. I feel that it just gives a little bit more crinkle. And this oven bag material just sews together so nice. So I wanna make sure that I'm not using my fabric scissors here. So I'm grabbing another pair of scissors to be able to put together um, or to cut this out. And you can see as I'm cutting how easy that oven bag cuts. I'm just gliding my scissors right along. So we're going to get that cut out and then what we're going to do is we're going to start to layer our fabric 
and we're going to add in those ribbon ties. So the first layer of fabric is going to be one of the pieces of the fleece right sides up, just like I've got. I grab my ribbon here and I grab a few clips. You do not need to add these ribbons to the side. If you want to do it without the ribbon, you absolutely can. In fact, the one that I have in my blog post, I did not add the ribbons to. But I just thought it would be fun to add just one more thing that she could use to easily grab the blanket. So I grab the ribbon from my stash and I cut them, I'm thinking somewhere between five and six inches, and then I'm folding them in half and then I'm just adding them at different places on the blanket. You can add as many of these as you want or none at all. The other fun thing to do is to use ribbon with different texture. I've got this silky ribbon going around, but it's fun. So look in your stash and grab out some fun ribbon. Then we're gonna take the second layer of the fleece and we're gonna lay it right on top. At this point, I like to clip again, just so I don't let those ribbon pieces slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip it all the way around. And then what we're going to do is we are going to grab the oven bag and that's gonna be the next layer that we put on. So really important that you put it together in the correct order. So you've got your fleece facing right sides together your ribbon is in between, and then you're gonna lay that oven bag right on top. And then I'm gonna clip it all together, and I wanna make sure that it stays clipped together and those ribbon pieces stay right where they need to, so that when I go to sew them, I sew them in just right. And you can see here my bag is a little bit bigger, and we're gonna trim that all up. One thing before I take it to the sewing machine, I wanna make sure I mark where I don't want to sew. And so I use pins to mark an opening. So we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew this all the way around and leave that spot open. And here we are at the sewing machine and I'm gonna use the foot of my sewing machine as my guide. So I do a quick little back stitch and we'll sew all the way around. And here we are back from the sewing machine. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I clip my corners. And clipping the corners just makes it easier to be able to turn and not to have bulk in your corners. The other thing that's a good idea to do here is to trim up a little bit. Remember how I had excess on the bag? I'm going to go ahead and just trim off that excess um, of my oven bag. If you want, you could also trim some of that fleece, but I'm actually going to do a top stitch. And so I want that thickness on the outside of my blanket. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Oh, it looks like I might have missed a corner here. So I need to make sure I go back and pick up that corner. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my clover um, turner that I absolutely love to use. So let's turn this bag right sides out and you can start to see those cute little ribbons that I put on. And what I'm going to do is I am going to use my clover tool and I'm going to poke out those corners. I have just come to rely on this tool so much I use it so often. So I'm just finding those corners with my finger and then I'm just poking it out with that tool. I love the tool because it's got the rounded edge and then it's got that pointy edge also. So once we get all of those edges out, what we're going to do is just lay our blanket flat. And you can start to hear that crinkle um, in your bag for sure. So this is coming together just so quick and so easy. So this is where that opening was. And I want to make sure that I don't forget where that is when it comes time to do my top stitch. So I'm going to give the sides of the blanket just a quick little press with the iron. I always like to have my iron ready to go. And so it's heated off 
to the side. I've had lots of questions about my iron and it is a cordless Panasonic. I'll make sure there's a link down below. So what I like to do is I like to put clips so I remember where that opening is because I want to make sure when I'm doing my top stitch that I am making sure that I'm closing that opening. So we're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and we're going to give it a top stitch. So we're back over at the sewing machine and you could use your walking foot if you have a walking foot. You got a little bit of bulk here. But what I'm going to do again is I am just going to use the foot of my sewing machine and I am going to use it as the guide. So it's about a quarter inch seam that I'm putting in and we're going to sew all the way around. Okay, we're back and I've got that top stitch all done and it's time to add in our snaps. So we are going to be using two heads and then we are going to be using a um, female and a male um, side of the snap. I just love this cam snap set that I picked up and I'll make sure I put a link down below. And then we're going to use that to put the wooden ring on. So for me to judge my placement, I can either measure out an exact placement or you can put your ring in and you can kind of get an idea of where it makes sense to put that first snap. Now, the thickness of my material makes it really hard to push the snap through. So my snap kit came with this little pointer. And so if I just poke a hole through, all the way through, and then I can use that hole as my guide. So I'm starting with the top side or what I call the cover of the snap. And then I'm grabbing one of the other sides and you're going to slide that in. And then you're gonna use your little tool to get that all put together. Now I will tell you where I've got this in here, it makes it a little tough to get that tool in. It does work, just have a little bit of patience and you just wanna make sure that you are covering both the top and the bottom of the snap and then you're just going to squeeze it together and that's what puts your snap in. So it takes a little bit of practice, but I know you can do it. And so then what you wanna do is kind of figure out where you're gonna put that other snap. I like to put it right up in that top corner. I'm gonna use my little tool again to add in a hole. And then I always like to eyeball that I'm putting it together the right way to make sure the snaps are going in the right direction. So once again, I'm just gonna put that piece in and I'm gonna use my snap tool there and I'm gonna put it right together. So look how cute this goes together. I'm gonna to throw that wooden ring in and then I'm gonna snap it together. And now the baby has something to be able to grab that blanket with. They can either grab it with the strings or they can grab it with that wooden ring. And it just works out so great. So I'm gonna see if I can get Miss Riley to hold on to this blanket. We'll get some pictures. And here's our sweet Riley. She just couldn't wait to get her hands on that blanket, that crinkle sound. And then of course, she is still teething, so she couldn't wait to gnaw on that wooden ring. Thanks so much for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. And if you're looking for other DIY type projects, don't forget to check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com.